So welcome back to the uh, second topic in the electricity unit, mains electricity. It's going to be shocking. Okay. So these are the learning objectives for this particular unit. Uh, again, it's up to you to go through these learning objectives, ticking them off as you go. And if you have any issues, come to see me. Okay, so hopefully, as we go through it, you'll tick them off. First thing we're going to look at is different types of current. So the first kind of current, remembering of course current is the movement of electricity, is direct current. So cells and batteries supply electrical current which always flows in the same direction. Okay, This is called direct current. It's also abbreviated to DC. And here's an example of a circuit and you can see from the arrows that the current is always flowing in the same direction. The other example is alternating current. So an alternating current, known as AC, the current is constantly changing direction in the way it's travelling in the wire. Okay, so here's an example of an AC power supply, and what's happening is one minute or one point in time it is going one direction, the next point in time it is going the other direction. The direction of the current is alternating. Okay, as you can see from the animation. So this lamp can work both in AC and in DC. Okay, so the name of the topic is mains electricity. And the electricity supply to your houses, our school, uh, your boarding houses, is known as the mains electricity or the mains. And it's an alternating current supply. And we might go into some detail as to why it's alternating instead of direct later. So in Malaysia, and also in Singapore, the current changes direction about one, well, it does, every a hundredth of a second. This means it completes a complete cycle of changes every fiftieth of a second. It therefore has a frequency of 50 cycles per second, or 50 hertz. And you'll learn more about frequency next year when we discuss waves. Let's look now at an um, electrical plug and the live and neutral terminals. Okay, so Malaysian main supply is 240 volts. One side of the AC supply voltage changes constantly, and this terminal is live. Okay, so that's one of the terminals is live, full of electricity. So if you put uh, your uh, a knife or a fork or anything that conducts into that uh, particular terminal, <coughs> Then you're going to fry your little brains out, okay? You're going to kill yourself. It'll be fatal. And the other ter terminal is about zero volts, okay? That's known as the neutral terminal. There's the third terminal, which is the earth terminal, which we'll look at later. Okay, so there's voltage variation at the live terminal. So the voltage, or the amount of energy that is being uh, transferred by the charge at the live terminal varies sinusoidally between 325 and negative 325 volts, taking a 50th of a second or uh, 0.02 seconds to complete one cycle. So what does sinusoidally mean? Well, here's a graph. It just means that it's going up like a sine wave from mathematics, okay? So it's going from zero down to negative 325, then up to plus 325, back down to zero, all in the space of the 50th of a second. Okay, so let's now just quickly make sure we understand some concepts from the last uh, eight slides by choosing the appropriate words to fill in the gaps below, and there is the following words. So pause the video now, and let's see if you get 100%. Okay, so welcome back. So something current, okay, DC current, direct current, is a current that always flows in the same direction, or one direction around a circuit, and it's supplied by cells and batteries. Alternating current constantly changes in direction, or reverses in direction, okay. The AC, or the main supply to our homes is uh, alternating current. In this case, the AC is supplied at an effective voltage of 230 or 240 volts, and a frequency of 50 hertz. And oscilloscope, can be used to display and measure a DC or AC waveform. Okay, so that sinusoidal um, graph we saw can be measured by something called an oscilloscope, which we'll 
use later when we look at waves next year. Next on, let's now look if we pulled um, an electrical wire to pieces, what we'll actually see, okay, in terms of electrical cable. Basically, the, the wire or cable will consist of a live wire, which is brown, a neutral wire, which is blue, and except with some devices with plastic cases, an earth wire. Okay, so that's what we'd, you'd probably, if you opened up um, the plug, that's what you'd end up seeing, because the three different wires go to the different parts of your uh, plug input or terminal on the wall. Okay, and the earth wire is a yellow-green striped installation, installation. And these are all surrounded by a layer made of rubber or flexible plastic, because obviously they're, they're insulators, so it stops <coughs> the wire heating up and um, also electrocuting you and melting the uh, outer casing of the cable. Okay, so let's now look at the different wires. The first one is the earth wire. This is designed as a safety feature, and the earth wire is connected to a metal casing of the device, or to the metal casing of the device. It means the electricity flows to that metal casing. And the other end of the wire is connected to a metal rod or pipe that goes into the ground or the building. Okay, so if you opened up the terminal, that's what you'd see. It would be basically going to uh, the grounding. So that means that the electricity just goes straight down to the earth rather than into your hands and frying you. Okay, so this guy here would be the earth, okay, of the terminal. That's where part of the plug would go. Okay, this one, and this is an example of a three pin plug. So if we opened up a plug, you would basically see the three different wires. Uh, link the brown wire, the live brown wire will be linked to a fuse, and we'll look at fuses later. The neutral blue wire, and the earth wire, which goes down into the uh, the ground. Pause the video now and see if you can label the diagram from memory. Okay, so number one, if I'm right, is the earth wire. Good. Uh, two is the neutral wire. Three is the casing grip. Uh, four is the fuse. And five, the last one, is the live wire. Okay, so any budding electricians in the class, let's now look at this particular um, plug and see what is wrong with the plug's wiring. Okay, so pause the video now and see if you can work out the things wrong with the plugs or wiring which you'd need to fix if you are an electrician. Okay, so welcome back. Let's have a look at the potential hazards that are present in this plug. Right, so the first one is the earth wire is not connected, so that's immediately dangerous, so any, uh, anything goes wrong in the appliance, any excess electricity uh, won't be going down straight into the earth, it'll just go into the plug or down the wire and cause it to explode. Okay. Uh, this wire, the live wire, is untidily connected. There's bare strands of wire showing again, so that will spark and possible fire or electrocution. And also the live and neutral wires are in the wrong place. Okay, they've been swapped over. Okay, you want the live wire to be going into the fuse for reasons which we'll discuss uh, later. And finally, the cable grip is not gripping the outer plastic part of the insulator. Okay, the appliance connected with this plug will probably still work, but you would probably kill yourself. Okay, because the earth wire is not really important for the electricity to flow, but there's a potential danger there from potential fire or electrocution. Okay, so little unit to test again, little topic test again. Uh, choose the appropriate words for filling in the gaps below. Okay, so most electrical cables contain three separately insulated wires. Okay, the two core cables are only used with appliances that have plastic casings, because the plastic can act as an insulator. The live wire has brown insulation, the neutral wire has blue insulation, and the earth wire has striped yellow-green insulation. In a three-pin plug, the live is connected on the 
the right next to the fuse, the neutral is on the left, and the earth is connected on the top. So hopefully you've got a hundred percent in those. Right, so mentioned fuses. So now let's look at fuses and why they are important. Okay, so a fuse is a length of very thin wire designed to melt and so break the circuit when the current gets too high. Okay, so if you've got the live wire, you've got too much electricity coming through it, then the fuse just melts and that means no more electricity can pass through. Okay, and there's some examples of some fused fuses. Okay. Okay, so the thicker the wire, the greater the current that is uh, required to cause it to melt. Makes more sense. The thicker it is, the, the wider it is, the more electricity can pass through it. Okay, so fuses are only supplied with a limited number of ratings. So you've got the 13 amps, the 5 amps, 3 amps. Okay, there's a very limited range. Uh, and this is the symbol that we would use for a fuse. Okay, so we've also got circuit breakers. A circuit breaker is an electromagnetic device that breaks a circuit when the current goes above a certain value. Okay, there's a couple of examples there. So they just basically blow the fuse. This is an example of a simple circuit breaker. So if you look at the diagram, current normally flows between terminal A and B through contact with an electromagnet. Okay, so that's that contact there. Okay. So there's electricity flowing there normally. Okay, there we go. When the current in the circuit increases, the strength of the electromagnet will be also begin to increase, and this will start. Okay, so this is going to get a lot stronger. Start pulling the uh, soft iron armature, okay, towards the electromagnet. As a result, the spring uh, one pulls apart and the contact and disconnects the circuit immediately and it stops the uh, current from flowing. Okay, and then you have a reset button which can then reset the whole system back and reconnect the circuit. That's an example of a simple circuit break. Okay, so we're going to compare now the differences and similarities between the fuses and circuit breakers. So both can prevent fire because you're reducing the, number, the amount of current that's flowing through an appliance, and fuses are simple and cheap to replace, whereas circuit breakers act more quickly than fuses and can be reset. Okay, so what exactly does the earth wire do? Okay, so here's a diagram illustrating an earth a wire being involved in a tumble dryer. Okay, so appliances with metal casings, like a giant tumble dryer, are usually earthed because they've got uh, the wire connected to the giant metal tumble wire case. Okay, so normally current flows to and fro between the live and neutral wires through the heater of the dryer. And the metal case is, is at zero volts and safe to touch. That's the plan. That's how it works. But if the live wire becomes loose inside the dryer, it might touch the metal case. The metal case would now be very dangerous to touch because it'll be full of electricity, being conductive metal. So that's where the earth wire comes in. The earth wire provides uh, a way for the excess charge from the, uh, the live wire to go to the ground. Okay. And the large current now flows through the fuse and causes it to melt and shuts everything down. Okay. So the dryer's casing is now isolated and the live connection is now safe to touch. Okay. Another safety feature is double insulation. So many appliances have casings made from an uh, insulator like plastic, right, using metal, and the electrical parts of the device, therefore you can't touch them because they're between you uh, and, your, uh, and the metal wire is a plastic insulation. Okay. So appliances are said to have double insulation, such that appliances will only have two wire cables and don't need an earth wire. Okay, so there's an example there of some uh, plug wiring for a double insulated wire. Okay, you only don't, don't need the earth right there. Okay, so plastic food case food mixer would have double insulation, and this is the symbol found in devices having double insulation. Then completing the words, there's the words to use. So pause the video now and hopefully you get 100%. Right, so two dangers of mains electricity are fire and electrocution. Okay.
Fires can be caused when too high a current is allowed to flow along cables, and current can be limited by placing a fuse or a circuit breaker in the live wire. The earth wire is used to prevent the metal casing of an appliance from becoming live should a wiring uh, fault occur, and a large current flowing down the earth wire will cause the fuse and the circuit breaker to isolate the live connection. Easy. So, what happens when I'm putting current into a wire? What, what are you going to feel? Well, it's going to feel warm. Okay, house wiring is made of copper wire and is said to have low resistance. However, some parts of devices have higher resistance because this leads to um, heating. Okay, so the kettle heating element is, is made of metal with high resistance because this causes heat energy to be produced when the electrical current flows. The greater the resistance, the hotter the heating element becomes. Okay, and this is our first equation around power, capital P. So electrical power of a device is equal to the rate of which it transforms energy from electrical to other forms of energy, like heat or light. Okay, so electrical power equals energy transferred divided by time, or, oh, okay, air, air, and it's in units of watts, okay? Energy is in joules, time is in seconds, and remembering, of course, using our prefixes, uh, like one kilowatt equals a thousand watts, one megawatt, a million watts, Okay, so... In terms of electrical power ratings, and you probably look at your fridge at home, okay, they are always shown on an electrical device along with the voltage and frequency requirements. Okay, so if you look at your iron, it'll have um, the electrical power ratings between uh, this one's 1650 and 1960 watts, runs between 220 and 230 volts, and at 50 to 60 hertz, which is what the, the electricity mains runs at in Malaysia and Singapore and the UK. Okay, so here's some examples of electric power ratings. So a torch has a power rating of 1 watt, quite weak. The energy efficient lamp is 11 watts. Desktop computer, 300 watts. A uh, hairdryer kicks out about 1,000 watts. Kettle, 2,000 watts, because I guess it's heating the water. And electrical shower is about 5 kilowatts. Okay, so there's some examples of power from different appliances in your home. Question one, calculate the power of a light bulb that uses 1800 joules of electrical energy in 90 seconds. Okay, so try and work that out, pause the video, and then we'll come back and see if you got the right answer. Okay, so electrical power, of course, is energy, electrical energy over time. Plug in the numbers, 1800 divided by 90, that'll be 20 watts. Question two. Calculate the energy used in joules by a heater of a power of 3 kilowatts in one hour. Okay, pausing the video, seeing if you're right. Okay, electrical power again, energy over time, electrical energy over time. Rearrange the equation. We have the energy equaling power times time. So 3 kilowatts times 1 equals 3000 watts times 360 seconds, being careful, of course, to convert into seconds, because that's the unit of time we use in physics, and also converting kilowatts to watts, and then we have the answer being 10.8 uh, megajoules. That's quite a lot of uh, energy. Okay, so complete the table, so pausing the video and completing the table. So, first one is 30 watts, okay, 600 divided by 20. 15 times 500 will give you uh, 7,500. 800 divided by 40 will give you 20 watts and 60 kilojoules. Converting kilojoules, of course, into joules and 10 minutes into seconds will give you 100 watts. So, hopefully, you got 100% there. Right, so... Now let's look at electrical power, current, and voltage. So electrical power equals current times voltage. Okay, P equals IV. And electrical power is measured in watts, electrical current in amps, voltage in volts. Okay, so question one. Calculate the power of 230 volt television that draws a current of two and a half amps. So 
again pausing the video and seeing if we get the right answer. Okay, so again, it's called power equals current times voltage. Plug in the numbers, the answer is 575 watts. Okay, so question number two, I've even given you the equation to start off with. Calculate the current drawn by a kettle of two kilowatts when connected to the mains of 230 volt power supply. Okay, so what you need to do, of course, is rearrange the equation. So current becomes power divided by voltage. So it'll be 2 kilowatts divided by 230 volts, or 2,000 watts divided by 230 volts, and 8.7 amps. Okay, so now let's try and complete the following table. Okay, so again, pausing the video and seeing if we get the right answers. Okay, so welcome back. So you should see, hopefully, uh, from the answers that it's going to be 1150 watts, 2 amps, 12 volts, and 1.2 watts, being careful, of course, to convert milliamps into amps. Right, so fuse rating. The equation current equals electrical power divided by voltage can be used the fuse rating of a device. So the correct fuse rating is the next and above, or the next above the normal current required by the appliance, remembering that fuses can only be bought in certain um, values. Okay, so uh, usually they're 3 amps, 5 amps, or 13 amps. Okay, so fuses of 3 amps, 5 amps, and 13 amps are available. What fuse should be used for a 60 watt, 230 volt amp or lamp? Uh, pause the video and come back when you have a answer. Okay, so current equals uh, power divided by voltage. So 60 divided by 230, 0.26 amps. So that means that you should use a 3 amp as the closest one to that small ampage. Okay, so let's complete this table now. All devices um, below have a 230 volt main supply. Right, so the first one um, will be uh, normal current will be 1.3 amps, so you'd choose the 3 amp. Microwave will give 3.9 amps, so you'd choose the 5 amp. A charger would be 0.04 amps, so you go back to the 3 amp. A heater would be 8.7 amps, so you go for the 13 amps. So hopefully you got top marks for that. Oh, and of course the device that you'd use a 13 amp normal current would be the 2,990 watt uh, device. Right, so like the other ones, uh, here are some words. So make sure, let's just see if we can get the right answers for the words. Okay, so electrical power is the rate of conversion of electrical energy into some other form and is measured in watts. Electrical power is equal to electrical current multiplied by the voltage. The greater the power for the same voltage, the greater the current drawn. The current fuse, for correct fuse for a device is the next available value above the normal current drawn by a device. And the maximum fuse rating of, for a three pin plug is 13 amps for an appliance with a power of about three kilowatts. Okay, so now let's look at the electrical energy E, um, the last kind of topic for this um, unit, or last part of this uh, topic of this unit. Uh, so the equation is E equals I times V times T where E is electrical energy measured in joules, current is in amps, volts in voltage, or voltage in volts, and time is in seconds. Okay, so question number one, calculate the energy used in joules by a 12 volt car starter motor when drawing a current of 80 amps for three, second, or thir yeah, three seconds. Okay, so pause the video now and see if you're on the right track. Right, so equation is E equals I V T. 
So plug the numbers in, 80 times 12 times 3, so the energy used is 2,880 joules. Okay, next question, calculate the energy used in joules by a hairdryer of power 1 kilowatt for 1 hour. Being careful, of course, with units. Okay, so E equals I, V times T, but remembering power is equal to I times V, so we can make a bit of a shortcut, so E equals P times T. So again, plugging the numbers in, making sure to change hours to seconds and kilowatts into watts, you get um, electrical energy being used as 3.6 megajoules. That's a lot of energy. That's a lot of energy from the hairdryer. Okay, so let's now just complete. Uh, these eight different values, so work out the appropriate value for each of the variables. Okay, so P, these are the answers, so P is 50 watts, E is going to be 200 joules, current is going to be 2 amps, and time is going to be 8 seconds, power is going to be 90 watts, voltage 30 volts, and current 8 amps, and finally the energy dissipated will be 360 kilojoules. Okay, so just a final note, okay, so one of the important things in life is paying an electricity bill. I've finally done it. I went to 7-Eleven uh, and finally paid my power bill for the first month and a half. Okay, so a meter is usually used to measure the amount of energy, uh, and it's measured in kilowatt hours. Okay. A kilowatt hour is the electrical energy used by a device of power one kilowatt in one hour. So, in order to calculate cost, calculate the kilowatt hours used from kilowatt hours equals kilowatts times hours. So you calculate cost using the cost, and well, because we're going to be uh, basically we're doing Cambridge, uh, well at least uh, GCSE, cost in pence equals kilowatt hours times cost per kilowatt hour. So electrical currently, so say electricity currently costs 12p per kilowatt. Okay, so question number one. Calculate the cost of using an electric heater of a power 2 kilowatts for 5 hours if each kilowatt hour costs 12 pence. Right, so kilowatt hours equals kilowatts times hours, so it's 2 times 5, 10 kilowatt hours. And the cost of pence in pence is kilowatt hours times cost per kilowatt hour. So it's going to be 10 times 12, 120p. So it's going to be about one pound twenty. Question two: Calculate the cost of using a mobile phone charger of a power ten watts for six hours if each kilowatt hour costs twelve p. Think about this for your uh, when you think about the phones, you're charging the cost for your parents. Okay, so kilowatt hours again, ten times six. So uh, just remember converting to kilowatt hours because you've only got ten watts. So it's going to be 0 0.06 kilowatt hours. Cost in pence going to be 0 0.06 times 12, about 0.72p. Uh, not the use of the heater, the use of the mobile phone charger. I'll just change that slide. And finally, the electrical bill. Calculate the cost of, an electri of the, the electricity that you can use over a three-month period of 90 days. That's for you to kind of work out. So typical power values are the following for these objects, and these are the costs, these are the associated costs. Okay, so that's uh, a task you can do for prep.